In this video, we're going to be building a small form factor 16 core 32 thread Ryzen powered mini gaming PC using Minisform's brand new all in one motherboard. Initially, when planning this build, I had something a little different in mind, but uh, a few things have changed by the end of the build. I mean, we'll take a look at everything that we're using here, mainly coming down to the GPU and power supply. I was going to go with the B50, but I'm saving that for another video because uh, I've got something very small form factor that I've been working on. I think would make a great workstation with that card. So I did swap that out and the power supply, but let's go ahead and jump into it. And the main claim to fame here for this build is Minisform's brand new BD895ISE. This is their new all-in-one motherboard. And by all-in-one, I mean it comes with the motherboard. It's a mini ITX form factor, CPU, and cooler. You will have to add your own fan, RAM, and storage. But these have been great for small form factor builds. And we finally got a little bit of an upgrade going from Ryzen 7000 up to Ryzen 8000. And this one just happens to be powered by the AMD Ryzen 9 8945HX. So we've got 16 cores, 32 threads, still based on Zen 4. But I do think this little motherboard is gonna put down some really good performance. Now with the motherboard itself, it does come with our fan mount, comes with our IO bracket. And for the fan, you can go with basically any 120 millimeter fan. I have this ID cooling fan laying around and I'm gonna test it out. I mean, it should keep it cool, but there's other fans out there that may work a bit better. When it comes to storage, I'm going with the two terabyte M.2 SSD from Viper. We've got two slots here. And since this is the SE model of their new motherboard, it doesn't come with Wi-Fi or an M.2 cooler, but these boards do utilize SODIMM RAM. I've got 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and it looks like on paper, it'll only clock up to 52, but these are super easy to get put together. And now what I need to do is add the fan brackets. So again, 120 millimeter fan will mount on top of this, and we're good to go with the motherboard after that. When it comes to the case I'm using, this is something I actually put together a while ago. This is a cheaper case on Amazon, and I'll leave a link in the description. It will not have that wood front panel. This is something that I did. It's just a little walnut sheet that I put on the front. By doing it this way, I will lose some airflow up front and a couple USB ports, but I think it looks good enough. Now that I've got the motherboard mounted in the case, I'm going to be installing my power supply, and I'm going with a 500 watt Epiva fully modular flex power supply. Super cheap over on Amazon. It's going to lay flat right in the bottom, and it's going to give me plenty of power for the CPU and the GPU I'm going to be using for this setup. And since I lost some of that airflow up front by putting that walnut front panel on, I'm going to be adding this 90 millimeter fan up top. So hopefully it'll pull some cool air in and circulate it around. But one thing I love about these Minis Forum boards is the cooling system here actually kind of acts as a blower style. So all of that air that's going to be pulled in over the heat sink with this installed fan is going to blow right out of the back of the unit. So hopefully everything will stay nice and chilly. We'll see how it works out in the end. So I've got everything wired up pretty clean for what we've got here. Now it's time to talk about the GPU. And at the beginning of the video, I did mention that I wanted to use the Intel Arc B50 here. But that's going to be going in a small form factor workstation that I'll be doing a video on very soon. So keep an eye on the channel for this setup. I figured we'd go more of the gaming route. And in order to get really good performance out of this, we do need a card that's going to be able to handle gaming. I went with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 low profile version. Few companies make them just like this. It does require one eight pin PCIe connector. That's why I use the modular power supply so we don't have a bunch of wires going everywhere, but it fits right in this case. And I do think uh, when it comes to 1440p gaming, high settings with some DLSS, this thing's gonna work out great. And once everything's wired up and put together, it looks a little something like this. I mean, it's a pretty clean build and I do wish these cases were a bit shorter. I mean, we've got room between the GPU and that power supply, so it could be a bit smaller, but these cases are cheap enough and they work out really well for builds like this. First things first, I wanted to take a look at the BIOS and just see what we've got here with this new board. And it's using Minisforum's visual BIOS. You can use a mouse and keyboard if you want to. I'm just using the keyboard. From our main menu here, we're gonna to head to advanced. And at the very bottom, there is some overclocking that can be done. I'm not gonna do it in this video. Basically, there's a few things we can mess around with here, like our infinity fabric, 
precision boost control, VDDG voltage control, and so on and so on. Right now, I'm just going to leave it like it is, but I do want to check out AMD PBS. So from here, our graphics configuration, primary video adapter, we've got integrated graphics, but we're going to be using the external GPU that we've got installed here. You can set up hybrid graphics if you want to, but I'm just going to disable it here. Uh, PCIe configuration, X16, GFX lane speed. This should default to Gen 5, but I'm going to choose Gen 5 just to be safe. Back to advance. AMD CVS, SMU common options, and our system configuration is set to auto. So it looks like we've got a 45, 55, 75, and I believe auto will take us up to that 100 watt TDP. So we're going to leave it there. We've also got smart shift control. If you wanted to adjust this manually, you could. I just really wanted to see what this thing would do out of the box. NVIO would be our iGPU. We're not going to mess with that. Nothing for the RAM here unless we want to get back into that overclocking. But it does look like we've also got hardware monitoring. So we can set up different fan curves for the CPU fan and other fans that we have installed here. But yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of settings that we can mess around with. We're going to save, changes, exit, and head into Windows. And now that we're in Windows, I did want to take a look at the TDP on this chip here. But as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen 9 8945HX, 16 cores, 32 threads. I've got 32 gigs of RAM installed in the system. We still got access to the Radeon 610MI GPU, but we're not going to be using that because we've got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 with 8 gigs of VRAM. Really wish we had like a 10 or a 12 gig version of this. I think with 12 gigs, this card would be great for most people out there. Uh, taking a look at the TDP, I've got hardware info over here. I also have CPU-Z up and running. So from bench, we'll stress this out. And right down here, I'll zoom in just a bit. We'll see what this jumps up to. And it does look like we've got that 100 watt TDP. And we could probably go up to like 120 from the BIOS if we do a little bit of overclocking. But I think 100 watts here uh, with this setup is going to be just fine. And I think we're going to see some amazing performance out of this chip for sure. So yeah, I'm actually glad that we do have that 100 watt TDP here. Obviously, it's a mobile chip. We've seen this in laptops. And for the most part, I mean, with laptops, this is going to come down real quick. With the cooler they have here, still going to get a bit warm, even though we've got that 120 millimeter fan on it. And by the end of the video, we'll take a look at our overall temps. But I do think we should be able to hang for a very long time at that 100 watt mark. So with that out of the way, First thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. Then we're going to get right into some gaming on this machine. Here's Geekbench 6, and the power plan is set to high performance. I was actually hoping to see a higher multi-core score here, given that we've got 16 cores and 32 threads. But remember, it's still based on Zen 4. Either way, we got a single of 2,848 and a multi of 15,969. Checking out 3D Mark Steel Nomad, total score of 3,180, and our FPS was 31.81. And the last one I ran here was 3D Mark Time Spy, coming in with a pretty impressive 13,471. I mean, given that we've got an RTX 5060 here, the low profile version, this isn't bad at all for the form factor. But these are synthetics, and now it's time to take a look at some real world gaming. First game we have here is Spider-Man 2, where at 1440p high with DLSS set to quality. And this is doing better than I thought it would on the RTX 5060. But I'll tell you, most of the time when I test this card, we've got a lower end CPU. Given that this is a mobile chip, I mean, it's definitely putting down some really good performance. And you can see from Afterburner, we're up to like 91 to 97 watts on the TDP. And so far, temps are staying pretty steady. I also wanted to test out Doom the Dark Ages, and I know that this will run at high, but unfortunately we've got the RTX 5060 with only 8 gigs of ERAM. With this game set at Ultra, it uses a little over 10 gigs of ERAM, so we just can't do it there. Taking it down to medium is kind of where it's at, with DLSS set to quality. But with it set up like this, we're seeing an average of around 76 FPS. 
I had a couple issues with Borderlands 4. Now, originally when I went into this game, it was performing just like this, but as soon as I got in the battle, it really fell on its face. I'm not sure what was going on. So I just rebooted the system, got back into it, and we're pretty steady here. But this is one of those games that I personally think still could use some optimizations because in some cases, just for a couple split seconds here and there, it does dip under 60 FPS. The RTX 5060 paired up with the CPU actually handles Marvel Rivals fairly well, where at high settings with DLSS set to quality, would be nice to lock this down at 120, and at medium settings you definitely can, or if you don't mind using a little more DLSS, you could. We're seeing an average of around 94 FPS. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077 1440p Ultra with DLSS set to quality. This is also performing really well. By the end, I had an average of 78 FPS. And keep in mind, through all of my testing here, we didn't use any kind of frame generation. We've got a RTX 5060, so we can use DLSS multi-frame gen up to X4, and it will tremendously increase your frame rate, but they're fake frames, and it's really up to you. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU and GPU temps in this case, and I have the side panel on through my testing, stock fan curves from the Minisporum BIOS. On that Ryzen 9 8945HX, our average CPU temps while gaming was 79, maximum recorded was 91. As for the GPU, this low profile RTX 5060 does get a bit hot, so adjusting the fan curve there from a third party app like Afterburner would really help out. Average temps while gaming were 78 degrees Celsius, and the maximum I recorded was 84. So adjusting those fan curves, or maybe not blocking off the front of this case and adding a couple fans would definitely help out with cooling. But overall, I still think it's a really solid setup. I didn't hit thermal throttle with it, and I mean, I was able to play everything that I wanted to with it. There's not a huge jump from the older Menace Forum boards with the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen 7000 CPUs, but I think they're kind of phasing those out for this 8945HX. And if you were interested in buying one of the all in one boards, I'd go with the 8000 over the 7000 for sure. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.